Mrs. Cheshire writes, I have magazine files full of sticker sheets. Many of them are themes I've bought over the years but never use. I don't want it to look like I've taken a sticker and just placed it randomly on a page to use them up. Glitter Girl, can you help Mrs. Cheshire with her sticky sticker situation? Of course I can. I have a few different ideas for you today and I'm going to start with one using lots of themed stickers since that was a specific part of the question. I'm using a collection that's brand new in the store at the moment. It's called Shoreline and it's by American Crafts. I'm going to be using these papers. We've got a floral, a turquoise grid, a red mini dot, a yellow starburst, and then this one which has all the journaling um, boxes and things to cut apart. And then the other sides look like this. And throughout this collection, there's a lot of something really specific like the sailboats, bicycles, and bottle caps with something um, a lot more versatile on the back. So you can have either just a little bit of theme or you can have a lot of theme. Or if you're not somebody who necessarily scrapbooks lots of beachy, surf themed type things this still might be a collection that you'll like because there's always that other side with um, patterns that are really versatile so if you like the colors but not the theme this is still a winner but I'm going to go ahead and use some themed embellishments today and um, including the sticker book which has all different designs and the matching dimensional stickers and possibly the pinwheels which are obviously less themed as well and then um, the ideas that I want to show you are specifically using the sticker book to create um, embellishment areas because these sticker books are something from American Crafts that I use a lot. So they all come um, in this format where the back of the of the packaging wraps around to form a little book. So you, if you want to make sure that everything is kept nice and safe, that's just part of the packaging. And then inside you have all different things. So these two are um, relatively new to my collection. So this is the brand new one in Shoreline. This is Amy Tangerine's sketchbook, which I used in an adventure not long ago. Then there's the Dear Lizzie Neapolitan with lots of pastel designs and watercolors. And then as they get older, you'll see that I've used them even more. So this was the original Amy Tangerine line, and I don't have a lot left in this one because I've been using that one quite a bit. We also have Daydreams in the store. All of these that I'm showing you are still in stock at two-piece. Um, Garden Cafe, which has lots of rich floral patterns. And a lot of the phrases in the Garden Cafe are really good for cards. And then this one is um, the Christmas collection, but this is um, currently in the big summer sale at 2P, so if you would like to stock up on some Christmassy things, there's all sorts in the sale, but that of all those books that I'm showing you, that one is in the sale just at the moment. So I just wanted to show you that there's all different styles, though in case um, this one isn't the right look for you, there are all different ones, and I find that I use these books a lot, so once I pick one, then I, there's pretty much everything in the whole book is usable in some way or another. Okay, so I'm going to get started with this layout with two 4x6 photos and all these happy summery colors. Starting with a really basic uh, setup of the papers on the page. So I've got a border stripped punch of that yellow and a strip of the multicolored floral that's going to bring all the colors and all the different patterns together. And then that large journaling box cut apart from the sheet. And then I've added the two 4x6 photos on the red mini dot paper on one mat so that I can can add this right on top and still have plenty of journaling space on that box but have everything overlapped just a little bit so um, there's plenty of room for writing for the title and for the embellishment and I can use the the grid in the pattern paper on the background to make sure I get everything nice and in line on the design. Now where I want to start with the embellishment is actually in a slightly different way than normal. This photo is um, a really very imperfect photo. It was just taken randomly. I wasn't even looking through the viewfinder. Um, but I, it was the right kind of picture I wanted to go 
um, with this layout to tell the story that I have in mind for here. Um, but it's it's really not a great picture. I don't know these people here because I'm taking the picture. There's nobody that I'm photographing in the shot. And there are just two parts of this photo that are a bit too obvious for me. I really want you to just see the beach and the scenery and the sky. And I don't want your eye to go to this person over here or to this um, something that sat in the sand here. So I'm actually going to layer the embellishment on top of the photo on purpose to cover those things up because this is what I want you to see that's um, just, just scenic and I can then cover up the things that are kind of distracting from that picture. Now I want to add two areas of embellishment. One to cover these things down in this corner of the photo. So then I want to work on a diagonal and I'm going to add something else up here in this top corner and that should help bring everything together. But the tricky part with stickers is of course that once you start sticking things down you're more or less committed. So um, at this point when I'm trying to build things up what I tend to do is go through the book and look for the pieces that I think will be most useful and I cut them out. So I have um, a selection of different pieces and in this case, because I'm working in one collection, pretty much everything in the book matches, so I'm just looking for a variety of shapes. So I wanted to include some borders, I want a balance of things that are words, but also things that are just images, and then I can start to build things up. So I don't have to commit at this point, I can just start to see how it might work. So I like the idea of running this border, and. Um, on the horizontal, but then I need something that's going to build up from that to cover up this part that I didn't want on show. So this tall rectangle works well there. And then I could add in this piece here to separate the two blues because otherwise there's an awful lot of blue on blue. So this could separate that with some white. But then I'm getting very boxy and it would be really nice to add some variety in the shape. So I've pulled out this little sunshine shape which also duplicates the multicolored floral that's in that pattern paper. And that can be a good mix to put somewhere in here, probably with this layer on top at some point. So I can start to see how that will come together. I'll add more things to it to finish the grouping, but that gives me a really good idea of where things are going without ever having something stuck so I can move things around. Then I want to come up in this corner and I started with these two stickers. So I have this one that's very themey with the little beach umbrella and I have the um, the word on a rectangle so I've got a good variety there of, of both picture and word but then I wanted to bring up this shape again and in the dimensional stickers there's this yellow sunshine with that same outer edge so I'm thinking this can go off the edge of the page here but I'm not so keen on the happy happy face on the Sun because there's nothing else that's kind of in that cartoony realm on the layout there are other things in the in the sticker book and in the pattern papers. So if I wanted to, I could add more of the smiling suns, but in this case, I'd rather bring something else in to cover it up. So I liked the idea that there was this um, subtle repeat of the floral here. And in the sticker book, there are also, if I can find them, there are some small, here we go, there are some small stickers that are those same flowers. So I'm going to see which ones might layer over the top of the sunshine. And if it, if over the face of the sun doesn't work quite right, I might just pull this top layer off and use just that bottom scallopy layer and uh, build on top of that. So that gives me some freedom and now I can start to stick things. So I'll start um, with the border and just go one step at a time so that I can always see where I'm going. So I want this just over the edge so that I'm on photo, paper, and the other paper. The more layers I can touch with one piece, the more the embellishment will bring all those different design elements together. And then I want this one because this is also going to bridge the gap between several layers. I want to arrange those flowers so that I know they'll still show up once I add more things on top. Can get this one stuck in place so that little distraction is covered. And then I can come back in with this one to separate those blues. 
I was actually a little bit luckier with that sun sticker than I thought because I went to pull that smiley face off and it came off clean away. So I could just use it as the plain sunshine and not have to worry about putting anything else on top. So I took those three flower stickers and I spread them throughout. So I've got two up here, including one with a pop dot underneath and then the other one with pop dot down here and I added a label as well. So now I'm ready to add my title and because the title is going to overlap onto the journaling block, I want to add the title before I put the writing on. And I have two options here. I can add the title up, up here across the top or down here um, to bridge the embellishment to the journaling. And I haven't entirely covered everything that I was thinking I would cover. So I'm going to add the title at the bottom so that I can place one of the letter stickers here to cover up that little bit of the photo that I didn't want included. And I'm going to use some of the thickers from this um, shoreline range and I just wanted to show those to you. They come in all different colors but these two fonts. So you've got the one that's um, glitter and there's a really nice blue in that as well and I'm always looking for more blue letter stickers. So that's a winner. And then this variety, which is the printed chipboard, which has kind of a mid-century style, nice design to it. So I'm going to use, um, I think, the yellow and the pink. I was trying to decide between the blue and the pink, and I think the pink is easier to read, even though I've got some red on there too. I think they should work quite well together. So I'm going to put the title together using those thickers and then fill in my journaling box. This second project is a way to use things that aren't specific to a certain theme and um, a, a different style of layout. So I'm working with several small images. So I've cut, um, cut these down to two and a half inches square and then I've cut the seam from paper. So basically I just want to make a grid across the middle of the page. So you can adapt to how many and how and what size you want. But the idea is that you cut um, some pattern paper squares, one uh, pattern paper for each photo that you have, and then you make a grid with those on the page. So these are all two and a half inch squares and this piece across the middle is six by twelve so it's just half a sheet. I'm using pattern paper from the Indie Chic collection by My Mind's Eye which looks like this. And it's one of their textured paper collections. And then I've pulled up a whole bunch of different stickers that I'm going to use on those four pattern paper blocks. They're not attached yet. The photos are in place. So I have the matching label stickers, but then some other things that are not from that collection. So these from Lost and Found, and they're layered stickers with glitter. These are in the two-piece sale at the moment, by the way. And the Pebbles masking, paper st masking tape stickers, sorry. they've um, done these for a few different collections. This is the one from the, um, the Valentine's Day collection. And the HodgePodge stickers from Jenny Boland Studios, these come in four different colorways and I really, really like them. I've used all four of them and I've used several different images from, really like them. Uh, label stickers from October Afternoon, this is the Sidewalks collection. And the word stickers, also from October Afternoon, this is from Five and Dime. So you can find all of these in the shop now. But the idea is that I'm then going to take these four squares and create some sticker based embellishment on those. And what I want to look for is to start with the largest stickers and then work my way up to the smaller details on the top. So I want the word to fit but I want um, part of the sticker to go off the edge and then I'm building a little collage right on top. So I'll go over to the masking tape Pull up one of those and add in maybe a label. And see if one of these smaller pieces would look nice. And so I'm basically just creating layers of stickers on top of each other. And then when I'm happy with everything that's there, I turn it over and cut it back into a square shape again. So 
just turn it over and sometimes I'll be able to use all these pieces again so I just um, just pop them back on the sticker sheet in case they come in useful and I'll ink the edges of each square in the same color as everything else on the layout. So I'm going to make four mismatched little pieces like this. So I'm using that same sticker sheet, layering the pieces up until I have um, four different little squares. From here, I can move around each of the four blocks and find what goes best in which spot. And basically when you are creating them, try and keep in mind that you want some things to go off each side of the block because you'll find they start to have a direction. So this one um, looks better on this side where the things look to end on this side, um, but some don't go off the left hand side or the right hand side, I'm sorry. So, um, it works to create a balance where you want the motion to look like it's heading in toward the page rather than out toward the outside. So I'll stick those down and then I can get my um, title in place and a little bit of embellishment to finish it off. But it doesn't take much because most of the embellishment is here in those little details. So I'm just looking at something like adding a border, putting um, something nice with the title and making sure I have my writing um, to tell the rest of the story. For the title, I wanted to bring out this yellow that's just um, there in the embellishment just a little bit. So I'm going to use the mistable thickers and just put them in my handy dandy misting box so I can add the spray without getting it everywhere all over my workspace. And I'm using the um, yellow sunshine in the Mr. Hueys. So just um, pop them on there but not stuck anything. And then I can spray those and leave them to dry and then attach them to my layout so I'll work on my writing while those are drying. And here's the finished version. A really, really quick way to create a layout that uses up all sorts of stickers and you can take all sorts of different designs that are in your collection and put them together, then just cut them into squares or rectangles or even circles and then uh, create a grid from that and you'll find that they uh, will mesh together really well even if they're from all different collections. So this week I challenge you to put your stickers to good use and show us in the gallery. I look forward to seeing what you make. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.